hi everybody. Good to, good to see all of you. Thanks for taking your time uh, to join us today. It's, it's, uh, I know that all of you are busy, uh, even though you're at home perhaps. Uh, there's so much that we're going through right now where, wherever we are. So I hope you are all good and healthy and safe and, uh, and hopefully being as productive as you can. It's been, it's been quite a, a couple of months at the law school and uh, I thought I'd seen everything in the five years I was here and certainly as 12 years as a dean. Um, but I think these last few months have been uh, both the most challenging, um, but also in some ways the most rewarding. Um, so I wanna talk through and tell you a little bit about what we were doing before COVID hit uh, in mid-March and then after, uh, after COVID and the, some of the things that we're working on both in the short term and the long term at the law school. Um, as I walk in um, to my building and I walk into the office, um, we still have our St. Patrick's Day decorations out. Um, as if time stopped on that day. So, so it's really, um, that's a way that I think about what we're doing at the law school, but also trying to bring everything, uh, everything together um, in, during this time. So as many of you know, some of you have been really close um, uh, in, uh, to the law school and have been keeping up, some of you not so much. Um, but, but what we've been doing over the last five years is really looking at what are the most important priorities for the law for the law school and for me i call them my north stars uh, the staff and the faculty and many of the alumni that I work with um, know what the North Stars are. And I want to share them with you uh, and, and share where we are with those North Stars. So we, so we always keep them in our minds and always keep them um, as the goals for our law school. And the first is the student trifecta. And when I came in five years ago, uh, you know, it was very clear to me that we could not do anything without the success of our students. Um, the economic crisis had hit DePaul hard, probably harder than most law schools because of some of the instability in the leadership. And so it was really important for all of us to come together uh, to make sure that our North Stars of students, uh, our trifecta shine. So that's admissions, career placement, and, and bar passage. So on the admissions front, um, we have made significant progress. Uh, I, I'm, as, you, as you all know, we have decreased the class size and we've improved uh, the, our LSAT um, in the, just in the last few years from 152 to 155 while keeping uh, diversity in our incoming class. And that's been, and that's been a, a tremendous uh, achievement, I think, and, and, and more to come. We have uh, already 178 students. Who, are, uh, who have first deposited to uh, the law school for fall. And that is, uh, that is actually pretty much right on the money for our goal uh, of 175 for the incoming class. And our, and our stats and, and our diversity look about the same. So hopefully um, we'll be able to keep them, uh, keep them uh, uh, here and, and keep them coming. So career placement is another really important priority for us. Uh, we had uh, a really tough time in the economic crisis. Our, I think our, our one, of, one of the years our career placement statistics may have been in the 50s for our uh, long-term uh, placement of our students. Um, but I'm very, very happy to say that we are now at 90% placement for our class of 2019. And that includes 70, I want to be right about this uh, statistic, 79.8% have full-time jobs that are JD required or JD preferred, and that is that is six to nine, six points, or about six to seven points uh, on the full time jobs, about eight or nine points on the overall job placement, just from last year. That increases just from last year, and so I, that's a, that's a tremendous achievement because we really need our students to get good jobs and be able to make a living wage and get great experiences. So we're on the path there as well. Um, the third uh, of the trifecta is bar passage. And as all of you hopefully know uh, that we have been improving, we have a great new bar passage director who has put in initiatives really throughout law school and even post, uh, post uh, grad, which we can talk about in the Q&A if you want to. Um, and we've increased that bar passage rate just, uh, just from 2018 to 2019, about 7.5 percentage points. And that's tremendous. And again, you can see the correlation between bar 
bar placement, bar, bar passage, and career placement, which are almost uh, identical or very correlated in terms of the amount of increase between those two st statistics. So, so that's a great, uh, that's a great, uh, uh, a great achievement. The second, uh, the second area that we really are, are looking very hard at and really working um, day to day is to and make sure that our law school is sustainable in the long term. And that means that we're making sure that we have great support from the university. So the university is supporting our decrease in the class size and, in our, and an increase in student discounting so that we can be, bring in the best and the brightest and the most diverse and the most attuned to our, to our mission. And so uh, they've been very, very supportive of that. And, and, and really, uh, really, uh, we really appreciate that. In addition, our fundraising, uh, our fundraising activities have really increased with uh, James and particularly Alan uh, heading up the advancement team for, for the law school. We had last year $3 million uh, coming, uh, coming in in terms of private donations, um, and we, we hope to exceed that this year. And that $3 million mark was the, was the most we had raised in about four years. So again, we're, 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 we're climbing, we're getting, we're getting to, uh, closer to those North Stars. The third, uh, and is, this is really important to our alumni, and I, and I know this, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, we've been very, working very hard in getting those metrics up, working on that trifecta, so that we can improve our national and regional reputation. Uh, I talk to alumni across the country and they say, Jen, when are we going to be back in the top 100 in U.S. news? And I said, we're working on it. It's, it we're, we're getting there. And so this year, based on all the hard work that we all put in together, um, we increased our uh, ranking in U.S. news from 132 to 118. So that was a very big jump. And again, moving forward and towards that top 100, that is our, uh, that is our, that is our ultimate goal uh, in, the next, in the next few years. And the other the other way that we're doing that is not just moving up those metrics that are important to U.S. news, which are also important to us, uh, like the like student success and uh, and and, re and and academic reputation, is also working on the programs of excellence that we've been known for uh, in, for many years. IP, health, business, public interest, immigration, human rights, family law, those are areas in which we are investing more and making sure those programs really shine um, so that can improve our reputation both nationally and, and, and regionally. And certainly last but not least, the other area that I hear a lot from alumni, not just about rankings, uh, uh, but also about mission. What are we doing to further the mission of DePaul in our, in our efforts? And, I, and, and we can talk a little bit more about the details in the Q&A, um, but we are working very hard um, in, a, in three areas. I would say access to education and making sure that our, that our incoming class reflects uh, diversity, reflects first generation, reflects um, the worth, work ethic uh, that, that DePaul has always been known for access to justice, and I see some of you um, on the call who work in those public interest areas and that we're continuing uh, to do that work uh, and, and making sure that we raise uh, students that have been sentient hearts and go out into the community and do that good work no matter what their career path. And, and last but not least is diversity and inclusion and, as you, and, and equity, and those issues I have come to the fore uh, this week in a way uh, that all of us uh, need to pay really, really close attention to and make sure that we do uh, put in change that's going to be lasting, that's going to be institutional. And so we started on that road, but that's certainly a work in progress and something that we've been working on with our diversity council, uh, as well as the rest of the community. So that's before March 15th. After March 15th, we've been working very uh, hard to try to really adjust to, uh, to, uh, to the new, uh, the world of COVID uh, in, in the midst of a pandemic. We were able to get all of our classes remote in about four days. Uh, and all of our faculty stepped up. They did synchronous. They did asynchronous. They 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 really um, they they really did a great job. And our students too. Boy, they 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 had to really persevere. They had to find places. Uh, that they could that they could work and they could study uh, and they could they could receive their classes and one of the things that we have really noticed um, it, you know since COVID and in, in going remote is the disparities that our students have and that goes to the mission and goes to what the more the work that we need to, to get done because of, some of our students did not have a quiet place to take their classes some students did not have the bandwidth 
to be able to stay on a call long enough to be able to sit through a two hour class. And so those are, those are issues that we really um, have had to address. Um, one of the things that we did, in addition to going remote, we had take home exams, uh, we, we redid the grading policy to accommodate students that were undergoing hardship, is we did raise a good amount of money for emergency funding for our students. It, 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 the, the need was great. Um, we probably satisfied about half of the applications that we got, but we distributed about $69,000 to our students uh, to be able to uh, meet their needs, whether it was food or shelter or technology to get them through the semester. And we also awarded about, about $60,000 to our graduating students so they could get some stipends to help them through the summer. Uh, and, that's, and, and that's something that's, that's really important, especially uh, because the bar has been delayed this year. Some of you know um, that the Illinois bar has been delayed to September 9th or 10th, which is about six weeks later than it usually is held. And so uh, we're doing a lot of work with the Illinois bar, um, with the Illinois Supreme Court, uh, to make sure that our students have a, a place that they can take the exam and that they can, uh, they can be able to study. So right now what we're planning to do, all of the law schools have volunteered to offer some space because we have about 2,000 test takers that we need to seat in rooms no more than 50, six feet to eight feet apart. And so we're going to hopefully uh, work on those logistics with the bar exam, with the committee on the bar exam, and make sure that those students can take the bar and hopefully be licensed um, by by late November. So so that's uh, we're working on that as well. Um, the other some of the other things that we've been uh, working on uh, in terms of the fall, the you know we we thought we thought the spring you know we 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 really were you know we got ourselves you know through the spring that was great, but but actually preparing for fall is harder because first of all we don't know where we're going to be in August. We are planning orientation to start August 17th, but we don't know if we're going to be able to have even 50 students in a room. So what we're planning to do, again, best case scenario, we'll be in phase four, uh, we'll be able to have, we'll be able to open our classrooms. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have what's called a, what we're calling a reduced footprint. And so we're going to have our students here in the building safely distanced, no more than 50 in a room. Uh, and so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go, some of our classes are going to be able to be face-to-face -face, and we're prioritizing the first year students so they can come in the building, they can create a community with one another. We're also prioritizing experiential learning, our writing classes, our clinical classes, and then some other classes will be hybrid maybe some face-to-face, -face, some remote, and then the rest of the classes will be completely remote. So the students will be in a mix and match. But if, if August 15th, we have to go back to phase three, then we're going to have to go all remote. So we're kind of ready for everything and anything. And of course, that's, you know, that, that, that's hard for everybody, but we're, we're spending the summer. Our faculty, for example, are going to be doing some workshops on being better and, and working better online and, and getting trained. And our students uh, will be able to plan accordingly in, in terms of what their, uh, what their, um, classes are going to look like. We're really, I you know one of the things that might be helpful you know, even to get some feedback from you all is the, 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 the employment picture is still, that's kind of the next, the, 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 you know, we're looking at the tip of the iceberg here, but the next phase is really what's going to happen to the economy in Chicago and beyond, and how is it going to affect legal services? We know we're going to be facing some sort of recession. How deep and how long it is, we don't know. And so one of the things that we're trying to do and really being proactive about is making sure that our students get the opportunities that they need uh, a, a, as quickly as they can. So for example, this year, we had some fellowships that were awarded for the summer, and we added to those fellowships to make sure that our students could get some paying jobs. We we made sure that all of our faculty that could hired a research assistant. So we have 30 of our students that are working for faculty just so they can get some work and some experience. So we're we're doing our best, but but obviously we're going to be needing to call on you as alumni to help us get our get our graduates uh, get get them internships and externships and other experiences. So when they graduate, 
uh, hopefully the economy will be better and hopefully then um, we can get them in uh, in those in those long term um, uh, JD required and JD advantage jobs. Um, you know, so so we we do have that we're recruiting for the new class. We're planning classes. We're getting ready for the bar exam. We're getting ready for uh, for whatever the economy uh, throws at us in the fall. And I guess what I would like to do is end in kind of lessons learned, at least to start to think about what are the lessons that we're learning about ourselves, what are the lessons that we're learning about the law school. Um, one is, I, I think we always, we have this reputation that academics work so slowly, we never get anything done, we don't make decisions, but it turns out we're more nimble than we think when we need to make decisions, when we need to be uh, agile, when we need to pivot, we do, and we work together doing that. And so I'm, I'm very pleased that we are, we, we are more nimble than we think we are. Secondly, I think we do need to be thinking really hard, because this has been a real disruption on legal education, and to really think about what's the best legal education that we can offer our students. Is it online? Is it in person? Or is it a combination uh, of, of those things? I was I was fortunate to have a class that I was teaching that went online. And, and I can tell you some of it, it was really good to do online and some of it was lost. And, and there are, are, are certain ways I think that, we, that our in-person education really does have value, and, but we need to be really thoughtful about how we do it. Uh, and, and, and this gives us an opportunity to do that. The, you know, the, the, third, uh, the third issue is I think we, we really need to face those disparities among our students and what policies and processes and resources we have that really do divide our students and, and try, to, try to bridge those gaps. Um, I think fourth is thinking about the bar exam and thinking about what is a competent attorney. One of the, one of the, one of the conversations going on nationally is do we need a bar exam at all? A few, a few of the, a few of the states have said, okay, let's not have a bar exam this year. How, let's, uh, uh, Utah's having a diploma privilege this year. You know, is that the wave of the future? We need, we, and, and it's disruptive, and we can think about what makes a competent lawyer and how we can test for that. And I think last, but certainly not least, is what this uh, pandemic and and then the the all of the issues that we faced in the last week have shown me is that relationships matter more than anything the the alumni that i have called upon the faculty that have come together my staff my team has been amazing and so it really shows that those that relationship building that you do that trust that you build um, is so important in these critical times and and so i thank you as alumni and my alumni community uh, and I'm going to be counting on you uh, in the next weeks, months, and years to come. 